In this tutorial we are going to continue talking about fixings. Today we are going to dedicate it to the fixings that we make with the deck screws, and in general, with wood screws. To do this, we have the help of the technicians at Index Fixing Systems. It's a great European specialist and helps us because it knows very well the customer's experience when they use screws for their work. Let's start by talking about wood screws. We also call them universal screws. It is, indeed, this type of product that we find in stores and that we use for the simplest works of wood. This type of wood screw also helps us to work, for example, when we have to put nylon anchors. This is because it screws perfectly on both wood and nylon. Let's start by thinking about the diameter. Generally, when we are working on simple furniture assembly, we choose screws between 3 and 4 millimeters in diameter, in 1 8 and 5 30 seconds of an inch. This is the most common. And within this, what is the selection criteria? Well, above all, it depends on the density of the wood. If I use a screw that is too big, in a wood that is not very strong, I run the risk of splitting the wood and breaking it. It is as simple as this. The diameter that I am going to use is a diameter that must be adjusted in a suitable way to properly hold it, but without the expansion of the screw inside the wood being so great that it can break it. Also, of course, another thing that determines the choice of diameter is that we have furniture plates. As we have already made the co-outersink in the furniture plates, we have to check that the screw that we introduce corresponds to the whole diameter and that the head fits perfectly to its insertion. As you can see, in this case, with a 3.5 mm screw we adjust well, with a larger diameter, the head stays out. The next key, obviously, is to choose the length well. Here what is in control is the thickness of the wood. If I have to fix objects, I always have to check that the screw that I am going to use does not exceed in length. And in the cases in which I am going to make assemblies or join two pieces, what I must take into account is that the length of the screw runs through enough of the bottom piece to make a good grip. Another aspect is color. Here we always have some doubts because we are looking at the screws, and since we see that they have a different color, this sometimes makes us think, will one resist rust better than the other? Will it be better protected? Well, to solve this doubt it is very important that we know that, when we choose the color of the screw, we only choose that, the color. Because, both, the galvanized and the zinc plating, the black, the white, any color in short, exists so that we can combine it with the color of the wood and often with the color of the furniture plates. Doing it this way, we choose the right screw. The resistance, from the point of view of weathering and corrosion, it is the same for all, except if we specifically prefer stainless screws, which are what we use for outdoors. But, at first, in the range of screws, there is no advantage because of the color. You can choose the one you want, because they will all give the same result. More keys of choice, the drive. That is, what type of screwdriver bit I am going to use for the head that the screw has. This is indicated in the package I buy. It informs us, in addition to the measurements, of the type of drive it carries. In this case, with these universal screws, we often use the posy drive. But keep in mind that, when we move on to another type of larger screws, as we have to use more force when inserting them, it is better to use screws with this type of drive that we call Torx 6 lobe drive. They are drives that allow us to do a much more efficient job and with which we will be able to transmit the torque much better. Thus, when working with the screws, we do not run the risk of damaging the heads. This always happens when the tip of the screwdriver slips because the threading is too hard. We also respect, of course, the size of the drive. In this case for example it would be a Torx 40. When we work softwood, using an electric machine, it also happens that we cannot make a good adjustment of the torque. Because, depending on where we are introducing the screw, we can make the head enter more or less deep.
The formula to work is to use a very low torque and, if I want to ensure a precise flush, I can also do the final ending with a manual screwdriver. Another key of choice for the screws, do we choose it with a complete head thread or with a partial head thread? If I have to screw softwood, it is important that the thread runs as much material as possible, because that will give us greater grip. In general, the criterion is that these partial head threaded screws, the lag blots, that are bigger screws than normal, are used in structural assemblies. In these cases, the amount of threading that we introduce into the wood is already enough, so we only need the final part to give us, precisely, a lot of shear strength. This way we have safer assemblies. But in general, when we are working with this type of furniture or small tabletop assemblies, the complete head thread is usually much more effective. The next key appears when we are working with hard woods, with more demanding assemblies. In these cases you have seen that whenever we work with universal screws, we recommend when making assemblies, to make a drill beforehand to empty some sawdust. In this way, you ensure that the screws do not make excessive pressure when entering, because that can sometimes crack the wood. This is not always essential. It is not if, instead of using a universal screw, we use high-performance wood screws. The first thing that you will notice is that the threading begins very close to the tip with a special design of ridges that helps us to make the introduction of the screw easier. At the top you can see some small ribs on the head that will make the countersink easier. Thus, the head is very well flush with a lower torque. In the case of the smaller screws, which we use to assembly the small furniture, they heads have some clefts inside. Thus, they facilitate the introduction but at the same time we can better introduce them into the countersink that the plates carry. At the end of the threading it has a self-cleaning device that facilitates the exit of the shavings and cools the screw. To test the penetration capacity of one screw and another, we are going to introduce a high-performance wood screw and look at the torque that we are going to use. We see that it goes perfectly to the bottom. With a wood screw of the same diameter, we repeat the test using the same torque. You see it fails, it is not able to introduce it and forces us to raise that torque more and thus make more force. Logically, it is also more difficult for us to do a good control of the flush of the head and, of course, we have a higher battery consumption when working. When we work with laminated boards, the wood screws are more difficult to insert because it is a surface very hard and very slippery. We are going to do a test working with a specific torque. We see that, if we are putting it in order to sink the head, we have to put the maximum torque in, despite everything, it does not quite fit well. With a high performance wood screw it is easier for the screw to start to enter when screwing because it has a sharp tip and a special threading that acts immediately. And we also see that, with a lower torque, we can get the head to be perfectly flush. The ribs that it has facilitate the entry even on the plasticized. As you can see, when it comes to stuffing the heads, the effect of these ribs on the high-performance wood screws make them perfectly embedded. To make common wood screws fit well, we must have countersunk previously. As I was saying before, for large structural assemblies we use these screws that have much less thread because, the type of wood we have and the thread extension that we introduce is enough to give us a very strong grip.
and a key related to security. What can I do when I put the screws in a place that is accessible to everyone and I want to make sure that no one can remove them? In this case I use tamper torque screws that incorporate a Zamic rivet star. We are going to embed it in the drive of the Torx key so that no one else can ever open it. This screw has a threaded for wood. If you want to use it on brick or concrete, you have to use a nylon anchor to insert it. Well, these are the main keys that we have seen in the wood screws. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we did researching about it. If so, Thanks for your like, subscribe to our channel if you are not already and of course share these videos with all your friends who like DIY.